Good morning, friends in Christ. We are glad that you're joining us on this Tuesday morning for our Mount Olive Facebook Live devotions as we continue to go through the Gospel of Matthew. And today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 23. So go ahead and open up your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 23. Once you get there, you can go ahead and hit the share button as we continue to build believers to reach out and connect people to Jesus as we grow in the word together, verse by verse, going through this wonderful gospel of Matthew, where we find Jesus in his last week of his life before he's going to go to a cross and then the victory of the empty tomb. And where we have been is Jesus is having some teachings and some discourse, especially with those who are in conflict with him, those who have raise the bar on the tension between Jesus and the religious leaders. And today we're going to see that he's going to have some strict words, some words of serious condemnation and warnings and judgment and destruction to the religious leaders of the sects of the Pharisees and the scribes. And the Pharisees and the scribes are already plotting to have Jesus taken out. They already have a problem with Jesus. They haven't hidden that by any means. And Jesus calls them out. Uh, Jesus is not afraid to call a spade a spade. And he knows that they major in minors and they've been adding all of these laws that they try to govern and direct and that they are the ones in control of. And they're not the laws of God. And so uh, the Lord is calling out their hypocrisy is what we learned yesterday. And so today he's going to pick up on that hypocrisy with the seven woes. And so we're going to talk about what that means. Hypocrisy here in the Greek is a person putting on a mask, somebody dressing up as somebody else than who they really are. And that's what Jesus calls the religious leaders out on, is that they are fake, that they're wearing these masks, these religious masks, but really they don't uh, live it. And so he calls them out and he's very harsh on them because of the role they play as they are leaders when it comes to the hearts and the souls of God's people and that they have powerful position of authority to lead people astray and to teach the scriptures wrongly and what that can do to the hearts and the souls of the people. And so that's why Jesus is so hard on them is because their hearts are hardened and they're about these laws and these regulations and they're majoring in the minors and they have forgotten who God is what his heart and what his word truly says in his heart of salvation. And so that's where we're going to be today. Matthew chapter 23, let's turn there. And we're going to see the beginning of these first of the seven woes. And the first one has to be about the door, the door of salvation. You and I, we walk through many doors throughout our day, whether it's coming out of the bedroom door, going into the bathroom to get ready in the bathroom door, Maybe it's the door to the kitchen for breakfast, uh, walking into the door of the office or the church today for me, but we walk through many doors throughout our day. And that's the same as we follow Jesus on this journey. And that's the key for the Christians is that we want to walk through the right doors, the doors that God is leading us to, the doors that he is opening, and that change the trajectory of our relationship with him in our life. When we walk through the wrong doors, that can take us in a totally wrong direction, away from the Lord and His will. And so doors are a powerful imagery on our spiritual journey. And Jesus is going to use that imagery today of the door of salvation because He's trying to let everybody know as He's preparing to go to the cross that He is the door that leads to eternal life. And it's a narrow door. And it's the only door that gives you eternal life in heaven and salvation. And so how crucial this is to get this right. And the Pharisees have gotten it wrong. And that's why Jesus calls them out with harsh, harsh words of condemnation today. As Jesus takes the gloves off and starts throwing some pretty vitamin packed haymaker punches. So Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Whoa, 
Here, the word woe means condemnation. It means judgment. And Jesus is giving this strict word to the Pharisees, to the scribes, to these religious leaders who are focused on fundamentalism and legalism and the rules and regulations and the man-made traditions that they have added to the word of God and that they have made up themselves. And they are rejecting Jesus, the door of salvation, and they're causing other people to also reject that door. And the ones who have found that door of salvation, who have received Jesus as the Messiah, who are learning about what the kingdom of heaven truly is like, they are also getting in the way of their walk, of walking through that door, because they're creating the stir and tension by taking on Jesus. And in their hard-heartedness, they can't see anything but their own views, their own perspective. And that's why they've missed out on Jesus and the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus is letting them know with a strict warning of condemnation of where they are headed without him as they are in conflict with him. Then we get to verse 15. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. So he repeats this. He's driving this, po this point home. Condemnation, judgment's coming your way to the Pharisees, to these hypocrites. They look religious, they act religious, but that's just the outward. The inward part of having a heart for the Lord and an inner renewal and being transformed and changed by the Lord is what's missing in their walk and in their journey. And they become about their title, their position, their guidelines, their policies, they're majoring in the minors, and it's become all about them, not about God when their role is to point people to God and to the scriptures, not to themselves and to their own laws and traditions and their own rules. And that's where they've missed out. And so he repeats it. He says, you travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. So we already have a couple woes of condemnation to these Pharisees. And now they even take it a step further. Jesus says, you will go through great lengths to finally get a convert. And a convert would be a Gentile who is circumcised, who comes into the Jewish faith at this time. And they become a child of hell twice as much as you are, because Jesus is saying, not only do you bring them into your man-made laws and traditions and your fundamentalism and legalism, that they too become self-righteous in themselves to where they become even stricter and also more judgmental than you already are as teachers of the law because it becomes all about this self-righteousness where Jesus is saying there's only one way that you can be made right with God that we're all sinful people and he's even trying to point out the sins of the religious leaders who are not seeing any sins of their own that they have this own self-made righteousness that comes from them following their own policies and guidelines and rules and so Jesus is setting them straight and he's saying, you're just making other Pharisees, other hypocrites. That's what you're doing when you're making Gentiles because they're following you and your ways, not God and his ways. And so Jesus calls them out on it. And then we get to verse 16. Woe to you, blind guides. He's saying, you're blind. You're not seeing God. You're not seeing his word. You're not seeing salvation right before your eyes. All the miracles I've done, all the teachings I've taught, Everything points to the true scriptures and to the true word, but yet you're blind and you're leading people astray is why he calls them blind guides. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing, but anyone who swears by the gold of the temple is bound by that oath. And so the first woes were about them closing the door of salvation and keeping people from the true door of Jesus Christ, Messiah. Now this woe and condemnation is about swearing oaths and promises and our word matters and jesus is saying your word matters as religious leaders you're put in this position of authority and you can are leading people astray in your blindedness and in your rules and your policies that you're making up yourself you're saying that it's okay to swear a promise or make an oath on this or using these words when it comes to the temple and then there are no consequences if you break it but then if you swear this way, then there are consequences when it comes to these things. And Jesus is calling out their hypocrisy. He's saying, your word matters. 
and you can't just make up the rules as you want them to be. And as you're making them up, you know them better than the people. So you're giving yourselves outs when you're not following your own promise and oath to the Lord in his name. But you're, you're not allowing the other people to really know what these rules are that you're making up. And you're forcing them to major in the minors. And you've missed the boat. You've missed the door of salvation right before you in Jesus the Messiah, the way, the truth, and the life, and you're focused on all these other traditions that you've made up, and your word matters, and you're going to be condemned for your false words, your false teaching, and your leading astray. He goes on to say, you blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You also say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing, but anyone who swears by the gift on the altar is bound by the oath. You blind men, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? And so here in their rules, their policies and guidelines, Jesus says they don't make sense. And they don't make sense because you're the ones making it up. On one instance, you say that you make an oath or a promise with this part of the temple or this part of the altar, it doesn't matter. But these other parts of the temple and the gold on the altar, well, those promises matter. He's saying, don't you see your own hypocrisy in the traditions and the laws that you're making? And that's what happens when we as humans, as sinful people, make guidelines and policies in God's name that doesn't come from his word. You can see the errors in it. You can see the hypocrisy in it. You can see that it doesn't make sense. And Jesus is calling them out on it. He goes on to say, Therefore, anyone who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And anyone who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And anyone who swears by heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. And so Jesus is calling out their hypocrisy, how they're majoring in the minors. And he's saying you can't divide it that way. The temple is the temple. Heaven is heaven. God is God. And you can't pick and choose what's okay and what has consequences of following your word and what doesn't within those same elements and you are missing out on that God, the Messiah, Jesus, is right before you. And that he is the door of salvation. And he is the one and the only one where we are made right with the Lord. Our righteousness, our salvation, our perfection comes through our faith by God's grace in Jesus. Not by following the law where we all will fall short. And so that's what Jesus is pointing out. That he's the way, the truth, and the life. And so as we go out today as followers of Jesus, we go out with his truth and also with his grace, pointing people to him, not to ourselves, because righteousness comes in Jesus and in Jesus alone. And it's important for us as followers of Jesus to point people to Jesus, not to ourselves, and for us to not major in the minors, but to focus on the Lord and his kingdom and where he leads, guides, and directs, because he knows the way. We are blinded by our own perception, by our own lenses. We only see a small vantage point. Jesus sees the whole picture. And so we pray today that we will see what Jesus sees, and we will be a part of what Jesus is doing and where he is moving, not doing our own thing, as he opens up doors for us, opportunities for us to live, to follow Jesus, and to share him with others. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, open our eyes to see what you see. Help us to focus on you and your truth and your grace and your wonderful gift of salvation as you sent your one and only son, Jesus, to come down from heaven to do for us what we can't do for ourselves, to live a perfect life. And in him and by him and through him, we are made righteous, not by what we have done, but because of what you have done for us. And so, Lord, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and open hearts this day as we follow you and trust you, that you would open the doors of opportunities for us to follow you because your will is best, and also that you would open up doors of opportunities for share the hope that we have found in you with others. And Lord, may our word be true, and may we always keep our word, especially when it comes to the promises that we've made to you. We're thankful for all of the thousands of promises that you have made to us as you love us, as we are your redeemed children of God. Bless us today so that we can be a blessing to others 
as we point people to you, for you alone are the one who deserves all honor and glory. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, all God's people said, amen. God's blessings, friends in Christ, as you go out today to follow Jesus.